Hello everyone. Today we are going to study this essay titled An Educated Person by Harold Nicholson. An interesting topic, isn't it? Before we go into the text, let us look at this question. What are your thoughts on education? Is education about book learning? Is education only about earning degrees? Is education about being rich and cultured? which means perhaps going to operas, museums, or concerts? Or does education have something to do with practical knowledge, like something possessed by a factory worker or a farmer who might never have gone to a school? Is education connected with common sense? Is education something which gives us freedom? There are so many questions, right? Now, let us know something about the author of this essay, Harold Nicholson. Harold Nicholson was a British diplomat and author. He has written more than 125 books, including political essays, travel accounts, biographies, and mystery novels. His famous work is Democracy, which was published in 1939. Now, let us look at what this essay proposes to do. This essay wants to give us some unconventional definitions of education. Okay, so if we are to get some unconventional ideas about education, we should know what are the conventional ideas or usual ideas which people have about education. What are some of the conventional ideas? Education is about institutions, book learning, examinations, degrees, being fit for the job market. Education is also about status or class. So these are some of the usual ideas that we have. Then what would be some of the unusual or unconventional ideas? That is ideas that are different from what is generally believed. True education is not compartmentalized. That means education is not divided into distinct categories, which means if you know about a particular field of study, it does not mean that you will know nothing about other fields of study. Okay. So true education is not compartmentalized, not scholarly or specialized knowledge only. Okay, the true education is a continuous process characterized by a lifelong eagerness to know and explore. It never ends. The process never ends. It goes on and on. The more we learn, the more we know that we must learn more. Okay, so it encourages the flexibility of the mind. True education makes our mind flexible. It means what? It makes us willing to question and change our ideas. Okay, so these are all the things that the essay proposes to do. Okay, now let us go into the text. We begin with the question, why did Nicholson write this essay? Actually, Nicholson received a suggestion from a reader of the British magazine Spectator to write an essay on what he meant by an educated person. Okay, so this essay got published in an issue of the Spectator and 
who inspired it an unknown reader okay so nicholson was pleased with this communication because of two reasons the request was made through an anonymous postcard that means postcard without the name of the sender and whatever was written on the postcard was amicably intended which means what the purpose of that message was to make a friendly suggestion and not a critical remark and actually this surprised nicholson because usually when one does not mention one's name on a postcard whatever he or she wants to say is hurtful or critical okay but this postcard was friendly not hurtful and the suggestion that was made was a positive suggestion a, a really good one which inspired nicholson to take up this task okay nicholson found it an interesting idea to write about the different definitions of education which he had heard from other people or which as a scholar he had evolved okay evolved means formed gradually okay now we come to the question why was nicholson confused so nicholson was all excited about the idea but when he actually sat down to write he was confused and he could not put anything on paper so why did that happen in certain contexts the term education did not refer to any degree of erudition or schooling so nicholson had seen this word used in some ways which were not connected to erudition erudition means the quality of having great knowledge or learning okay that is the meaning of erudition so if it was not related to erudition then what else was associated with the idea of an educated person nicholson had heard of this phrase being used to mean a man or woman of quality okay so a person with quality was was also referred to as an educated person but nicholson was confused when he could not describe the word quality in definite terms how do we define quality here what does it mean in general so these are the reasons why nicholson was confused now nicholson makes a confession and you must have noticed that i am using the present tense there is a reason i want this to sound as if we are reading the text right now okay so nicholson makes a confession as he doesn't like euphemisms he says that he has used the phrase an educated person in connection with the rich or the upper class okay so what is an euphemism it is a mild or indirect expression substituted for one considered to be too harsh or blunt when referring to something unpleasant okay so suppose you want to say something about the people who are not earning much okay so if you say the lower classes to refer to them it might be offending it might not sound polite okay so instead of using the phrase the lower classes you use persons belonging to the lower income group so that will bring in an economic aspect and it is as if you are referring to a fact rather than you know making a statement or making a judgment of someone based on what they earn okay so nicholson didn't like euphemisms so in this essay he 
makes a confession that he understands education as something which is connected to the rich or the upper class. So he says, uses the phrase upper class or the rich. Okay. However, the confession is lamentable. Lamentable means something which is bad. Okay. So he says that his confession is not something which makes him happy. Okay. He's sorry that he connects education with the rich. And this confession brings an ingenuous blush to his cheek. Okay. Ingenuous means unsuspecting. That means uh, when you don't realize something is happening. Okay. So because he is embarrassed about having associated education with a state of being wealthy, he is blushing. Okay. That is what he says. And with this, he begins the description of his struggle to write this essay. Okay. So he thinks further and when he does so, he finds that there is a confusion. In other contexts, Nicholson used the phrase an educated person to refer to a certain level of education. So he remembers. Okay. He remembers the time when... Uh, at some point, he used this phrase, an educated person, to refer to a certain level of education. Okay, he refers to a level. But what exactly is that level? The range is a big one. Okay, if you want to look at the different levels of education a person uh, you know, might go through, then you can begin from an alphabets to someone like Aristotle. Okay, from an alphabets to Aristotle. Now, who is an an alphabet? An an alphabet is a person who does not know the letters of the alphabet, or in other words, an illiterate person, someone who does not know to read or write. Okay. Now, from an illiterate person to someone like Aristotle. So, the range is a big one. Who is Aristotle? Aristotle, we know, was a Greek philosopher and polymath. Now, this term is associated with education and you must know this. Who is a polymath? A person of wide knowledge and learning. Okay, so Aristotle's writings cover many subjects, physics, biology, logic, ethics, aesthetics, poetry, theater, music, psychology, linguistics, economics, politics, geology, government, and so on. Okay, so Nicholson is confused. Who do I choose from this big list? Okay, then. He finds a way out. He says, if I have to talk about education and if I have to create a definition which would be applicable to all, okay, in general, then I must choose people from this range, this big range. So if I want to keep some people, then I want to exclude some people. So who are the uh, people I am going to exclude from my list? Okay, that means I am not going to talk about them or discuss them. Number one, lower levels of schooling. So Nicholson says uh, he will not talk about those who are able to read and write in English. See, for them... A knowledge of English is common. It is their mother tongue. Okay. Then those who are able to do simple sums in arithmetic. Those who have an average school certificate knowledge in history or geography. Okay. So they will not be included. Then who else? The specialists. Okay. Like lepidopterists. Who are the lepidopterists? Those who study or collect butterflies or moths. 
okay then he would also not include conchologists now who are the conchologists are those who collect shells especially for scientific study okay so nicholson will not include specialists because they have knowledge in a limited field their knowledge is not general okay then there are also some other people whom he wants to exclude those for whom acquiring knowledge was for tutors that means they acquired knowledge by chance rather than will they acquired knowledge because they were in certain conditions not because they wanted to acquire knowledge okay like uh, nicholson gives some interesting examples someone with a russian mother why a russian mother is mentioned here that is because in russia mothers are usually very strict about education of their children okay so they are very serious and anyone with a russian mother is bound to be a good student because uh, russian mothers they not only take care of uh, education like uh, that happens in schools but they also take care of the higher education of their children and they even you know work hard to fund their children's education so if you have a serious mother like a russian mother then you are bound to be good at studies okay but if you for some reason if you are uh, separated from your mother or if you go away to a different place if you don't have that inner urge to learn then maybe after some years you will not try to acquire more knowledge okay and then we cannot call you educated okay so that is why he uses uh, the figure of the russian mother here okay then he also says that someone who has worked at fratelli alinari okay since the age of 10 that means since childhood will also not count as an educated person because the you know boy the child or the the girl okay it may be a boy or a girl from childhood if that boy or girl has worked at fratelli alinari now this is one of the world's oldest photographic firms in italy it is an archive of more than you know 5 lakhs of uh, photographs okay and the photographs would be important photographs important uh, historical photographs so they would uh, carry uh, a, a lot of knowledge in them okay so someone who has worked in such a place by trying to explain the significance of each photograph to uh, the visitors okay they would learn something so this is a knowledge which is acquired by chance and it's it's not as if uh, they have acquired this knowledge consciously or um, they have uh, had uh, a desire to earn this kind of a knowledge but because they had to earn their living because they have been working in this place uh, since childhood they have acquired some knowledge okay so th these are examples of knowledge which are acquired by chance okay and not by will so uh, nicholson says that he wants to leave these uh, kinds of uh, people out of his list okay now nicholson then comes to a working definition working definition means what a definition which can be improved okay but it is something to start with nicholson creates a working definition an educated person is an individual who being possessed of average intelligence application and memory 
has devoted several years of his or her life to the acquisition of general knowledge. Okay, now he has a definition. But he is not satisfied with this definition either. He questions two phrases in his working definition. One is several years. What does it mean? He has devoted several years of his life to the acquisition of general knowledge. Okay, then what does the phrase general knowledge mean? Then let us see. Does the phrase several years mean the years between the ages 5 to 14 or 5 to 21? Nicholson asks. Then he concludes, it cannot refer to either because a person who stops learning at any age is not an educated person. We learn until we die. Then how can we say that several years is enough Okay, how many years do we mean by several years when learning is non-stop? Learning happens till death. Okay, so then this phrase does not seem right. Then, general knowledge. What does this mean? A pedant would say that the aim of all higher education is to know something about everything and everything about something. Okay. So, uh, a pedant. Who is a pedant? A pedant who is very particular about the details. Okay. So, if a pedant would try to find out a definition of, uh, you know, education, then he or she would say that all higher education is to know something about everything and everything about something. Okay. But Nicholson finds a flaw here. Knowledge is endless. One cannot possibly know everything about something. Okay, so a person who has completed his master's in uh, chemistry, let us say, or he has done PhD in chemistry, cannot say that now after having completed PhD, I know everything about chemistry, right? That is not possible. That is a false thing, thing to say. Why? If it was possible to know everything about a subject, then we would not have the field of research in any branch of learning. Research means that there is always something new to find out. And that is why researchers spend so much of their time and energy in trying to find out what has not been said till now. Okay, so that's something which is not possible, knowing everything about something. You cannot do that. Then, knowing something about everything, is that possible? No, that is not possible either. Because the number of things that we must know in order to be called knowledgeable is also infinite right there will always be some things which we haven't heard about so then if we haven't heard about something but it exists okay but if we haven't heard about it how can we say that we know something about everything what is that everything okay now Nicholson thinks that people who claim to have these extremes of erudition Erudition means, you know, it means great knowledge or learning. Extremes of erudition. Extreme means what? The highest degree. Okay. So, if you say, I know everything about a particular subject, that is also an extreme because you say, you know, everything. Okay. If you say, I know something about everything, that is also an extreme because you say that you know that there are these many things to know about. Okay, so that is also false. Now, Nicholson says that these people who claim to have extremes of erudition are sports or freaks. Okay, now these are words which mean someone with abnormal characteristics. That means Nicholson calls 
such people who claim to know something about everything and everything about something he says that these people are abnormal okay not normal they are not normal or ordinary and they are like lightning calculators okay he also uses an interesting term who are called lightning calculators persons uh, able to solve complex arithmetical problems mentally without the help of a calculator mentally with extraordinary speed okay so they are called lightning calculators so they cannot be ordinary people all of us do not have such abilities okay majority of people do not have this gift so this definition is not applicable in general okay so this is not an acceptable definition of education okay then let us move on now nicholson comes to a very important point and that is elastic thinking the specialists who think that they know everything about something are not capable of elastic thinking okay they also look look like the contorted shapes of a topiarist's art so these are expressions used by nicholson in the essay and it would be good to understand what he wants to say okay so he says that these specialists in a particular field if they say that they know everything about their field then they do not have elastic thinking elastic means what something which is stretchable okay now if they don't have elastic thinking it means that they can understand something only in one way they cannot look at their uh field of study from different angles okay they will have only one way of thinking or doing something okay that is inelastic thinking or inflexible thinking okay so nicholson says that those who have inflexible thinking they are like the contorted shapes of a topiarist's art who is a topiarist someone who is skilled in the art of topiary so what is topiary the practice or art of training cutting and trimming trees or shrubs into odd shapes okay when shrubs are cut into the shape of uh, a man let us say okay the shrub looks like a man because uh, the topiarist uh, in a way uh, that person can be a gardener who has this special skill of you know cutting and trimming trees so that they have different kinds of shapes okay so those shapes are not natural right they they are man made uh, naturally the way a tree or a shrub would grow that is different from uh, the work of a topiarist okay so in the same way the people who do not have elastic thinking they are not normal people that is what nicholson is saying they are not normal people they are you know somewhat twisted or bent out of the normal shape okay that is why he compares these people with inelastic thinking with those uh, shapes of a uh, topiarist's art okay so then the important thing here the thing we should focus on is this question what is elastic thinking actually this term has been uh, discussed uh, in detail by american theoretical physicist leonard mlodinow okay so what is elastic thinking flexible thinking or elastic thinking is the ability to think about something in a new or different way okay you know something can you think about that same thing in a new way okay that is what we mean by elastic thinking okay let me give you an example and you will understand suppose someone asks you how far can you walk into a forest if this is the question then what do you do 
immediately you start thinking about the size of the forest oh my god i should know the size of the forest is there a way to you know measure uh, the forest the you know the whole um, expanse of the forest is there a way, a way in which we can measure it you start thinking like this and it is difficult right it is not easy to measure a forest and then give an answer to this question how far can you walk into a forest okay but if you are intelligent and look at this question closely you will understand that this is not a matter of physics or mathematics but it is a matter of language or perception how you look at this question okay how far can you walk into a forest halfway that means only half of the distance of the total distance over which the forest extends only till half of that distance can we walk into a forest okay once we cross that halfway point if we walk more then we are not walking into a forest we are walking out of the forest we will come out at the other end of the forest okay so how far can you walk into a forest the answer is halfway okay so without doing any measurement you can just give this answer when when you are ready to keep your mind open okay so even if uh, you belong to the mathematics department you should not you know think about going there with some device in order to be able to measure the forest right so this is something that you must understand in connection with elastic thinking that right? your thinking should be flexible you should not be so engrossed in your own field of study that you cannot think about a particular issue in different ways okay all right now nicholson says what then is education for a normal person so we don't want uh, you know all those abnormal uh, people who say we know everything about something or something about everything we don't want uh, those specialists okay so then what is education for a normal person the normal human being who aspires or wants to be educated should concentrate upon those areas of learning which are in tune with his or her individual capacities okay so i am good at mathematics so i have chosen mathematics as my uh, subject so i should concentrate upon mathematics because i like this subject i have an interest so whatever i have to learn about this a uh, subject at different levels of my education i will keep on learning okay then the normal human being who wants to be educated should also enlarge those areas by becoming acquainted with the wider areas which surround his or her own nucleus of knowledge now understand this what is a nucleus it is a central part of the cell right now nucleus is the central part it means it is the most important part which is responsible for all the activity in the cell in the human cell okay now what is nucleus of knowledge if mathematics is uh, you know my subject or a subject that i i am interested in then that is the nucleus of my knowledge that is the most important part of my knowledge okay but that is not enough i should enlarge my knowledge i should extend my knowledge of mathematics by becoming acquainted with the other fields of study which are connected with mathematics okay that is what nicholson says that I that such a person who wants to be educated should enlarge those areas by becoming acquainted with the 
wider areas which surround his or her own nucleus of knowledge. Okay. Now, I am going to give you an example which will help you understand this thing in a better way. And this example has not been mentioned by Nicholson. Don't get confused. Okay. I am giving you this example so that you will understand what he wants to say. Now, uh, look at this figure that you see. It is all about interconnectedness of branches of knowledge. Okay. Now, suppose uh, your field of study is physics. All right. Then, as you will see, that forms the nucleus of this circle, this figure. Okay. That is the central point. That is the nucleus of your knowledge if this is a subject you are interested in. Okay. But you must know whatever is there in the pink area as well, not just in the area which you see in black. Okay. Now, what are the things? There are many things. I've just chosen three out of them. What are those three things? One is economics, one is literature, one is sociology. Okay. So physics uh, belongs to the science stream and all the other subjects that you see, they belong to the art stream. Okay. Now you will ask me, why must I know about these subjects if my area of interest lies in physics? Okay. Then I will tell you and I will not explain it to you. I will just tell you that there is a connection between the kinetic theory of gases and it is applied to the kinetic exchange models of markets in economics. So if there was no connection, why is a theory of physics being applied to an economics concept? Okay. Then, there is also a connection between liter literature and physics and I find this really interesting that in Shakespeare's plays, there is this idea of a play within a play. That means a play will be staged in one of Shakespeare's plays. Okay, so it is a play within a play and that concept, it relates to quantum theory. Isn't this exciting? I am interested to know more about how this can happen, how this connection is made. Okay, then look, let us look at how physics is also connected to sociology. Mathematical tools inspired by physics used to understand the behavior of human crowds, human crowds and what are you know, the behaviors of people when they are part of a bigger group, that is a subject of sociology. Okay. But we are using tools inspired by physics to understand the behavior of human crowds. Okay. So now, if you say my interest lies only in physics and I will not look at the other things in the pink area. Okay. Then you miss out on so many applications of the principles of physics and then you cannot say that you have mastery over your subject of choice. You need to have some ideas about the other fields which are connected with the concepts of physics. Okay, so this is just to give you an example. If you are really interested to find out more, then I leave you to it. It is your duty to search and find out how physics is related to economics, literature and sociology and perhaps many other branches of knowledge. Okay. Now, let us come back to Nicholson's essay. There are also some examples which Harold Nicholson gives. Now, look at the examples that he gives us. Nicholson says that someone whose temperament is fitted to understand music should not force himself or herself to study engineering. Someone who likes music should not, even if uh, his or her parents force him to, he should not, he or she should not study 
engineering and should choose to study music. But this person should not limit himself or herself to the study of music. Okay, I've chosen music. I will only study music. That is not how it happens. What should he or she do? Learn about plastic arts. What are plastic arts? All kinds of visual art like painting, sculpture, film, photography. Okay, now how will learning about all these kinds of art help that person who is interested in music? Music is also an art. So if you study other art forms, you will know how to capture your audience, how to keep the interest of your audience. Okay, then that is not enough. The person also should read biographies of musicians. And if you read biographies of musicians, that means the stories of uh, their lives, that comes under literature, right? Biography is a part of literature. Then the person should also study the history of their times. How did, you know, different kinds of music evolve? Okay, history of different forms of music. What was the nature of society during the time of a particular genre of music? Uh, the development of a particular kind of music at that time, what was society like? Because you see, if it is an art, it will like it, it will like to please an audience. So, what was the nature of that audience? Okay, so you know, arts of other kinds, biographies, history, all these are uh, areas which a person interested in music should be acquainted with. Similarly, someone who has literary taste, someone who has interest in literature should also study arts, history, language, okay? Because literature is not possible without language and must know at least one literature other than his or her own. So if I study English literature, that is not enough. It is not enough to study English literature in isolation. I must also be acquainted with Odia literature. Okay, because nowadays it is very important to study literature in comparison with other literatures. Okay, so comparative literature is a very important part of literary studies. Now you see how, you know, any particular branch of knowledge is not enough by itself. It should be connected to other branches of study and the person who wants to call himself or herself educated should focus on his or her interest, right? But he or she should also know about these other fields, okay? All right. So now, uh, Nicholson gives us a better definition. What is that? An educated person is one who has acquired a trained, elastic and cultivated mind. Okay. So what is uh, the meaning of the word cultivated? Who is said to be cultivated? Someone who is well-read, well-informed, Someone who is also sensitive to others. Okay. Someone who is polished in manners. Someone who understands what values are. All these things, they make a person cultivated. So an educated person is one who has acquired a trained, elastic and cultivated mind. Okay. Now, Nicholson ends with the idea of liberal education. He ends his essay with this term that liberal education is desirable. Liberal education is something uh, which we must aim towards. Okay, so what is this uh, kind of education? We all agree that education needs to train individuals 
for the world outside schools and universities, which is far more challenging than a classroom. See, when uh, we had the pandemic, right? How many of our values were tested? Our patience, our resilience, our uh, you know feeling for others who are in pain. All these things were tested. Okay, so had we not learned these values, then we would not have survived such a difficult time when we had to stay at homes for long stretches of time with nowhere to go. You know, we only had our family members with us or some people were even alone. They did not have anyone. Okay, so if they would not have learned these values apart from their uh, you know, regular education, which earned them degrees, then they would not have survived the pandemic. So it is very important to learn other things which are necessary for life, not just book learning. Okay. So then there are uh, some skills which are called soft skills. Okay. What are those? Time management, stress management, teamwork, communication, listening as a skill, then decision making, problem solving, all these things are important for life. Okay. So if we just say that, you know, I have covered all papers uh, which were required to complete my uh, you know, undergraduate education, I can do very well in the examination, but I don't know how to manage stress. Then what happens? The person, when the stress is higher, when the person goes to another institution of, uh, you know, higher education and is subjected to uh, higher loads of work, the person cannot take the pressure. Okay. And if this student has not learned how to be strong mentally, then all these degrees will not help him or her. We have seen how students, they even take their own lives because they cannot handle this, uh, you know, vicious mm, thing, the very bad thing that, uh, you know, ragging does to them. Okay. So you have to learn it. You have to learn to stand up for yourself. You have to learn to protect yourself. You have to learn these practical things skills apart from bookish knowledge okay so soft skills are as important as hard skills what are hard skills they are the educational degrees you know the skills that you require to get degrees to get tra formal training to get certifications okay but hard skills are not enough soft skills are very important so what is liberal education? Liberal education is an approach to undergraduate education that promotes integration of learning across the curriculum and co-curriculum and between academic and experiential learning in order to develop specific learning outcomes that are essential for work, citizenship and life. Okay, so learning that combines academic education, that means, uh, you know, the courses that are prescribed, then the examinations that we have to appear, the degrees that we have to earn, all these, they come under academic education. What is experiential education? The things we, which we learn from experience, from our day-to-day -day interactions with other people, the things that we learn from, uh, you know, our interactions with our teachers, our uh, fellow students, okay. All these things are important because they are going to train us for life, okay. So we want something that will train us for a job. We also want something that will train us for life in general, 
Okay. So we have to combine soft skills with hard skills. And that is what we mean by liberal education. Okay. So Nicholson ends the essay here by saying that the people who are able to apply their learning beyond the walls of their schools, colleges, or universities are truly fortunate. Okay. So this is the whole essay and I wish you a happy learning. Thank you.